Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 10th of October 2011. We've actually had some flares, albeit relatively modest ones, but that is a significant improvement over what we've been experiencing the last couple of days. But before we get to why this is occurring, our trivia question. On this date in 1964, the Outer Space Treaty came into effect. Which one of the following statements about the treaty is untrue? 1. It bans weapons of mass destruction from space. 2. It does not allow any country to claim any area of space as their sovereign territory. 3. It prevents the establishment of any military bases on the moon or anywhere else in space. 4. It allows a country to retain jurisdiction over any object it launches, but it also makes it liable for any damages that object causes. And finally, 5. The treaty has not been ratified by either the USSR, now Russia, or the United States. The answer will be given at the end. Since we met yesterday, we've had four sea flares. Two from Region 1313, and one from the new region coming over the northeast limb, now numbered 1314. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what's been going on in each one of them in detail. We have five officially numbered regions on the disk. We lost 1310 overnight, which faded away to a spotless plage, but we've added Region 1314 in the northeast. We also have four unnumbered regions emerging across the northern hemisphere, which probably means that sunspot number is going to start to increase in the next few days, assuming the trend continues. Let's first look at Region 1309 in the northwest. Overnight it seems to have regained a couple of the trailer spots that it had earlier. However, just ahead of it and to the south, there is a new region forming, so there's a chance that that might grow and become a newly numbered region. Next we turn to Region 1312, near disk centre in the north. Yesterday I said there were some trailer spots developing around this region. It turns out that they weren't trailer spots, but a new region emerging. And the growth in this region has been quite rapid. So this is actually a promising development as far as activity is concerned. Next is region 1314 in the northeast. That is rotated onto the disk that we see some of the structure and unfortunately it does seem to be a single large spot with just a few small satellite spots. So this looks like a mature region that isn't going to give us very much activity. However, more hopefully there are two small regions emerging to its south and there is a chance that they will interact with region 1314 to produce some significant activity. Region 1311 in the southwest is a single spot and getting very close to the limb, so we'll ignore that for the time being, and turn to region 1313. Now, I've been quite disappointed with this region so far, however, overnight it has uh, shown some quite rapid growth, and I suspect will produce more flares in the next day. You can see very plainly that there's a whole bunch of new uh, large spots that have developed between the leader spot and the trailer spot. It almost looks as though there's a new region coming up in the middle of the old region. If that's the case and this trend continues, we could get some spectacular events out of this particular region. So overall, solar activity has been fairly low. However, in the last few hours it's shown a significant uptick, and we may be moving into a more active period for the next few days. Now let's take a look at the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours. Those of you that have been uh, keeping an eye on region 1313, will be rewarded for your patience because that's the region that has grown most spectacularly in the last half day. In the Magnetic Movie, watch for the emergence of those four new regions in the Northern Hemisphere. And also look around to see if there are any other regions that are emerging in a similar way that haven't yet produced spots. At least in the AIA data, we have one channel, the Low Temperature Coronal Channel, that has a decent amount of data in it. So I'm going to show that and particularly look at the huge loops on the east limb joining the northern and southern hemispheres. Quite spectacular. In the stereo A data, we're looking at the western half of our visible disk on the left-hand side of the image, and the regions that have rotated over the west limb on the right-hand side of the image. And you can see there's been quite a bit of activity in the regions that have rotated over the limb recently. From the stereo behind data, we can see the eastern half of our visible disk on the right-hand side of the image, and you can see the regions that are about to rotate onto the disk on the left-hand side of the image. In the high-temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, in the southeast you can see a huge coronal hole uh, stretching from almost from the pole to the equator, which will probably be affecting us in about 10 days' time. There's also a small region coming over the southeast limb. I wonder if that'll have any spots to, uh, tomorrow. In the SOHO coronagraph data, we can see we still have a steady diet of small coronal mass ejections. Interestingly enough, primarily from the southeast, 
which is not an area where there are many active regions at the moment. So I wonder what's going on there. Maybe those regions coming over the southeast limb will be more active than I think they are. The ACE data show us that the temperature and the velocity of the solar wind has remained relatively constant over the last day. However, the density has remained fairly high, uh, reaching 10 particles per cubic centimetre at one point. The high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes are recovering to more normal levels after taking a nosedive yesterday. And of course, without major flares, we've had no proton events. The images taken from above the northern pole show that the auroral zone has uh, retreated significantly and weakened in the last 24 hours. This is consistent with the KP index, which has been showing a steady decline for the last 24 hours from a peak which presumably is associated with that uh, wimpy coronal hole. And NOAA has been carrying no space weather alerts for the last 48 hours. So in summary then, the X-ray background remains at the B3 level. The sunspot number has dropped to 71. The radio sun intensity is at 118 solar flux units. The solar wind speed is 360 kilometers per second with a density of about one proton per cubic centimeter. And geospace conditions are rated as quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares are unlikely, and X flares are very unlikely. The sunspot number should ease higher. CMEs remain likely. The solar wind speed should go higher. And it is unlikely that we're going to get a major geomagnetic storm in the next day. From the composite coronal image, we can see that we have no major regions due back for at least five days. If you'd like to find out more about what is happening on the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today or some of my other videos, go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to keep abreast of what's going on in The Sun, please feel free to uh, subscribe. you will be more than welcome to do so. If you like the video, by all means give it a thumbs up. But if you don't like the video, I don't mind you giving it a thumbs down. However, it would be really nice if you left a comment such that I can see if I can improve the video such that you will like future ones. The answer to the trivia question is five. Both the United States and Russia have ratified the treaty. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.